All right, moving on to video number two in this uh, little mini series of just showing my um, PowerShell scripts that I've been using over time. If you haven't seen the first video, um, I will put it up here. I think it's there. Anyways, just search for it, you'll find it. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's get uh, let's get moving here. So we ended up on the last video showing this uh, get duplicated AD account script. Uh, next one in the list here, get group policy by setting name. I don't remember a thing about that. Let's get rid of all these. And let's just drag this thing in here. All right. Uh, so we're importing the group policy commandlets. Uh, what was the name of this? Get group policy by setting name. Hmm. Maybe this was something where we could um, put in a parameter for the actual name that we think might be in there so we can find the actual name of it. Because for instance, the last place I worked, we had too many group policy objects. And of course, over the years and different sysadmins, the naming scheme kind of changed over time and some of us messed up a couple times. Some of us put it a different way. So we didn't have a really good standardization on naming schemes so looking through hundreds of policies trying to find that one might have been uh, a little problematic so <clears throat> um i think that's what this was for uh what else we got we have get hardware version this one a buddy of mine wrote and i liked it a lot so i kept it and kept using it Basically, you could just uh, just type in there, get hardware version, and then a list of computer names, and um, it would present you with some uh, some default system information, hardware version, like drivers, uh, driver versions and, and dates and all that stuff. So that one's a pretty cool one. Uh, what else we have? Get installed programs. Somewhere along the lines, I think I wrote this because I wanted a quick way, or maybe I got it online or something, but a quick way to um, view all the installed programs that, that the OS saw. I don't remember if this worked well or not. I, one day I will start running these on, on this machine, on this test machine here, and just uh, show you the output and just test them again, maybe update them. I want to rewrite these so they're not dependent on organization specific stuff I want to be able to use parameters for those for each one of those so we'll get to that one day uh, what else we have get lock status this one came about I wrote this because I don't remember what each one of these has or says oh <laughs> yeah this one we wrote kind of as a joke to uh, or during testing uh, I wanted it to play an audio file of a laugh when a an account or something happened. I don't remember. I'd have to look through this code. Check status, screen lock worker. When a screened, oh, screen, get locked status. Yeah, so we wanted to say, okay, we want to know when this computer goes from the active state to a locked state. Basically, when you Windows L and you lock it. So took some some work and I don't know if I ever ironed it out a hundred percent because I found a couple problems but um, it would just continuously laugh when um, somebody finally locks their computers or unlocks their computers well either or uh, so we were messing around with that probably not the best use of time but it is what it is uh, let's see what else do we have oh uh, get logged in this might be the one that determines who's logged into the computer. And actually, I converted this into a get CD logged in, basically into my module that I mentioned in a couple of videos ago that um, I could just type get dash CD logged in or something like that. And then I'd put in the computer name and it would tell me who's who's logged into it. And with terminal servers, it would it would list all of them, uh, all the user accounts that are logged in. But um, that's that get mac address i don't know if i did this one or if it's from somebody else or it may have just been a quick one um let me tap that and save it 
basically use a WMI to get the network adapter information and just to pull out the um, MAC address. So I don't remember anything about that, but it's there. <laughs> um, what else? Get my ping. Now this one, this was when I was really, really, really new to the last place I worked. Um, and I, the problem was the sysadmins at the time were setting up a particular type of laptop being used as like a tough book of some sort. And Intel, I think it was in, no, Cisco. I don't recall if it was on the laptops or if it was on the APs. Anyways, it was for the ED, emergency department. And those things, they would complain that they would drop the network from time to time for, for a short period. And we we're troubleshooting it. And I just came up with the idea. Let me, let me write something that would do a continuous ping from my machine and then write a log of any anytime it fails or times out to write that log and it had specific info in the log. I believe that's what I did here. Let's see. So, okay, so I must have pulled this off of poshtips.com initially and just given them credit for it, but I know I changed some stuff in here to make it work for what we wanted to do. Um, I think it's when I add, I think I added this stuff. I commented it out. Heck, I don't remember anymore. But anyways, yeah, this would log. Um, failed pings to a file and I would check it in the morning and then we would check the complaints and when they came in because um, the end users were keeping a log as well but something like that let's close some of these out go through a few more what else do we have here oh get my ping report this is I think I converted it I think the get my ping was their version I think I converted it to this yeah 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 yeah, this is it. Um, I'm not going to go through it all, but but yeah, that's essentially what it did. Again, I'm not showing these just to say, hey, copy this code or anything like that. I'm just kind of giving you guys ideas of stuff I, I wrote along uh, as my time went along at that last place on things that helped us in, in certain scenarios or just learning in general. So, and then the reports, I think this was maybe some failed reports. I probably... This is way newer than it should have been, but uh, let's just see. All right. Now, it would be color-coded in the terminal or the command window, um, but it wasn't color-coded here. Just because in the command window, I had it always displaying everything. It was green, I think, every time it was passing, and then it would, every time it failed, it, would, it was red or something. I don't know, something like that. All right. So what else we got? Okay. Uh, get O365 apps on servers. I don't remember what this was about. Something when I was migrating everything from um, the locally installed versions of Outlook and Office and everything over to Office 365. Um, just creating a variable and uh, getting a content of the server list that's also in this directory. So I just provided probably the entire server list for the hospital at the time. And then um, I created uh, variables for Outlook when we're blah, blah, blah. And for each service, blah, blah, it got processes to see if anything was actually running. So it's probably if anything was running. I really don't remember. <laughs> but there it is. And let's do a couple more. Get pending reboot. I think we're troubleshooting something with uh, servers that or even client computers, I don't remember, that um, we're trying to figure out if something's having a problem somewhere and if they needed a reboot because of uh, like Windows updates or something. So uh, I don't know what's the latest one. This is way old. Uh, where'd it go? Gets the pending reboot status on local remote computer. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, a lot of... A lot of notes. I don't. Okay, I didn't write these. Definitely, what came from somewhere else. Um, they're using the begin process and end blocks, which is nice. And yeah. Anyways, uh, that I think goes out and just checks if there's any reboots pending on a machine. And yeah, let's do one more. Ooh. Uno mas. Uh, get pending reboot status. Uh, it's obviously the same thing. And maybe 
this one I rewrote maybe? I don't know. Or maybe this is somebody else's version and I was testing it out. I would do one more because that's not fair. That was the same thing. Uh, da -da -da -da. Get picture. So this one, it basically would just, I would just pop in get picture and then I would type in what I knew the part of that file name might be. And then it would search a directory of photos or files actually. And it will launch anything that included that part of the name in there. So um, stuff like that. Anything else for now? Get service status. I mean, that's a very basic one. Can't imagine that being much. And you can find these, you can write these pretty easy. Oh, maybe I was testing out workflows. Um, obviously I haven't done too many of those since then, but I think I was learning some pieces of the workflow stuff and just testing it out. I can't tell you if it was good or bad or anything. Again, I tend to write these things just to get the job done. Um, down and dirty, as long as it's not airing out, it's able to handle some sort of error stuff. Um, and then you just set it and forget it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, finally one more. Let's do one more for now. Get teams total. Don't remember what the heck that's about. Might have been... Oh, oh, this is Teams, not Microsoft Teams. So Healthy Wage is like a shared um, healthy contest thing that organizations might set up. And we had one at the hospital. And I think instead of going to the website and always checking how many we had uh, in our team because it was during the sign-up process, I think it was checking that invoke web request, web request, web request hero section info. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it worked at the time, but it was a cool little thing I did. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's definitely lots more to come, but I think I'll try to keep the videos a little bit shorter and we'll end uh, get teams total.